Leveling up is an imperative mechanic that allows you to not only garner more health for you throughout the run, but the ability to use different weapons, magic, and overall, make the game a lot more fun and manageable. So that begs the question, can you beat the Soul Series at level 1 without the ability to level- Yes. Yes, you can. But which one is the hardest? Hey, Pants, Nathan here. And to figure out which Soul Level 1 run is the hardest, we're gonna have to dive into Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, I do not like this Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring at level 1, then rank their difficulty by how loud they make me want to scream. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna get swallowed. Don't swallow me. Ah! And want to break my controller. I couldn't even see you! This camera is so shit! On a scale from 1 to 10, I'll be ranking each one of the games three times. One for early game, one for mid game, and one for late game. Then I'll take the average and compare it to the rest of the games at the end of the video. And the one with the biggest number, out of 10, is the hardest Souls game to beat at level 1. Now to start off, we have Dark Souls, my favorite game. Are you joking? I fucking pressed combustion! R1! R1! We name our character after a disease, since our character has skin cancer. You can't outrun cancer. Set our character to Pyromancer, the level 1 class who has all these weirdly distributed stats, but that doesn't matter much because this game has something called... Pyromancy. Which happens to have zero stat requirements and is simply the most broken mechanic in this game. And trust me, I will be taking full advantage of that. And GG. <laughs> After finishing off the tutorial by throwing balls at a fat demon's ass, pause, enhance, enhance. I get yoinked by a burb who drops me off in Firelink where I can kill the real tutorial demon. <laughs> then go collect items all around the map, most of which I don't need, but I did grab the red tear stone ring. I won't even be using it, but I grabbed it. Killed this black knight after a million chiropractic procedures. Grabbed the grass crush shield. Got a lucky drop from a crystal lizard. Oh, we got a titanite chunk. That's so lucky. And then made my way to undead parish, which I skimmed past to stick my three inches inside a boar's ass. And then grab the basement key. Basement key. There we go, we got it. Now inside the basement, we can not only recreate the famous Bloodborne meme, but we can also save the sorcerer dude with a key we buy from the ultra super secret undisclosed merchant. And he sells us a ring that is overpriced. 20,000, oh, Jesus Christ. And will increase our damage later on in the run. But for now, we go back to the basement, intentionally stand at the perfect spot for the dogs to not hit us, and fight the most well-designed boss in all of the Soul series. My favorite part is the two woof woofs in the arena, who are very hard to kill, with a machete man swinging his sword, I'm alive, in an office cubicle of an arena. But once I learned the ancient Chinese method of cooking the dogs first, take this dog, before consuming them, there we go. Okay, we've done it. The rest of the fight went, take this, yes, swimmingly. After teleporting out, we now had access to the depths, where I do a crazy skip that I got. Ready? Watch this skip, guys. Ready? It's a crazy skip. Huh! I missed on my first try, rescued the pyromancer dude, and got politely bit by pit bulls. No! I- This game is so bad. Now back in Firelink, we can talk to the swag pyromancer guy, buy his pyromancy, and use him to upgrade our flame hand, which we will be taking all the way up to the undead parish, start chemotherapy, and now our character looks like a Pixar mom, but without the big fat juicy- Now it's time to go ring the bells of awakening. Let me in! Which means facing the gargoyles. <gasps> And although the cutscene makes them look intimidating, they are definitely not. If you have fireballs and combustion flames, they are 
If you forget to equip combustion and ran out of fireballs and have a plus zero axe and get stuck on the edge of the arena, but we're gonna ignore that because bell, 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 bell. Now we head to Blight Town to go ring the other bell of awakening, but it happens to be guarded by the world's ugliest woman. At least from the waist up. Yuck, nasty, ugh, ew, yuck, nasty, nasty, go back down. Back down. Now Quaylag is one of three bosses that is immune to fire damage, and we have to use our plus zero axe in order to do damage. And that might sound like a very difficult task, but it's not. Since all her attacks are extremely predictable, she's gonna do her long spewing attack. And if you hide inside her spider parts when she swings her sword, it's impossible for you to get hit. I also have 2,000 hours in this game, but looking past that, yes, I did it with a level zero axe. She's easy. She's actually so easy. Now with Quaylag dead, that signifies the end of early game for DS1, which I'm gonna give a two out of 10 for difficulty. It would be a 1 out of 10 if Capper Demon wasn't such a little bitch. Now starting off with mid-game, we gain access to Sen's Fortress, which I easily get past because I've played this game before. And now we have to face the Iron Golem, who is another GG too easy boss fight that can be cheesed by standing behind him and hitting his ankles. I even got the world's greatest red tear stone ring set up by willingly- No, no, he's gonna throw me! Letting him grab me. RTSR setup, boys? Now we do extra damage. And eventually the iron golem <laughs> dies, meaning it's time to go to Anorlando. But before we do that, we can use the souls we've acquired to get the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, which will increase our damage of our pyromancy, go all the way back down to Blight Town to buy ourselves upgraded pyromancies, and then head back up to Blight Town again, run to the Darkroot Basin, kill the Hydra, which will unlock this lady for us, who will give us the Dust Crown Helmet, which will also increase our pyromancy damage. And with that, we are as upgraded as we can possibly be for Anne Orlando which happens to contain the hardest boss fight in this run. That's so stupid, AKA, and I'm dead. Orenstein and Nikocado Avocado. I couldn't, I literally couldn't move because, oh my God. Now people believe ONS is difficult because of the fact that you have to fight two bosses at once. And I am definitely one of those people. However, the lucky part about this fight is that you can't get one shot by anything besides Smo's ass. But if you play your cards right, you can avoid Smo by leading him into pillars while you try to kill Ornstein with your overpowered flames. During second phase, Nikocado Avocado gains electricity, but is still as stupid as he was in first phase, since you can bait out his jumping attack over and over again until you succeed in killing him. Now, once we acquire the... Are you trying to distract me? <laughs> <sighs> I like men. We acquire the Lord Vessel, but before we place it down, we go to Andre to purchase the Crest of Artorius and cook up another dog. However, before we do that, we kill a few NPCs, gather the Darkwood Grain Ring to give us more iframes, and because backflips, and go and fry up a poor and helpless dog who was only attacking us because of a promise he made to his owner many, many years ago, and has been guarding his gravestone ever since. But I don't give a fuck. And now once we place down the Lord Vessel, that concludes the mid-game portion of this run, which with ONS and Sif was a good balance between difficult, but not too difficult. Four out of 10. Now starting with late game, we have to kill four Lord Souls before we kill Pling, Pling, Plong. The first one up is Nito, because he's neat. Oh. That was a terrible joke. But before we kill him, we have to kill Pinwheel. He's dead, and now it's time for Nito. And besides the skeletons in his arena. No, I fucking held the shield button. God damn it. He is a facile victory. Mostly because all of his attacks can be avoided by standing near his, um, groin. And his AoE blast is really easy to predict. Now on to the next Lord Soul, we have Seat the Scaleless. I was wondering if uh, you can answer one of my- <laughs> But before we fight him, we kill more NPCs, I'm a murderer, <laughs> gather their humanity, and get Chaos Storm from Quaylag's sister. We also kill the giant blacksmith because I'm racist towards the giants, who happens to drop the best weapon for a soul level one character. 
I wasn't doing it for this, but I'll take it. Once we upgrade that to plus five, we go and fight Seat the Scaleless. And the boss itself, and GG's boys, is easy. The run to the boss is not. I just love that. Please let me in the fucking fuck these clams. If we make it past the clams, we have a walking hitbox of a boss whose biggest weakness is being a walking hitbox of a boss. So unless we get unlucky with the crystal AoE, that's so stupid, we can bait out his attacks and hit his crystal balls till he ba da ba 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 mick dies. Now we have the bed of chaos to kill, which means going to Ceaseless Discharge, who is canonically the most difficult boss in this game, then going to Demon Fire Sage, whose biggest weakness is fire damage. How ironic. And then going to kill the Centipede Demon, who is one of those bosses who's immune to fire damage. Oh, come on, that was so stupid. But with enough patience, how does that hit me? And the plus five blacksmith hammer, he wasn't all that bad. And with him dead, we finally reach the Bed of Chaos, who is another gimmick fight for us to easily get through. Now on to the last Lord Soul, we have to face the Four Kings. To the Abyss we go! And this would usually be a difficult fight, but we are overpowered and have a maxed out Pyromancy Flame, so we do way too much damage. Now with the Four Kings done, we can give the Lord Souls to the Lord Vessel and fight the final boss of this game. The Pling Pling Plong Man. And get parry, bitch. And get parried. And GG. <laughs> and yeah, he's not that difficult. I'll give late game a 3 out of 10. Most of the bosses you can cheese or make them repeat the same attack over and over again, making this an easy segment of the game. And with the ratings complete, that gives Dark Souls 1, Soul Level 1 Run, an average of 3 on the difficulty scale, which is currently the hardest on the difficulty scale, since we haven't finished the other games yet. Speaking of, welcome to Dark Souls 2. The worst game, the best game in the franchise. But let's see if it can beat Dark Souls 1 when it comes to difficulty. Starting off, I named my character after one of my mods in Discord. You should join that, by the way. And made another beautiful creation. We start off by grabbing the Tutorial Dagger, which is one of the only weapons we can equip, along with the Broken Straight Sword, Hand Axe, and Mace, because our starting stats are all at level 6. And unlike Dark Souls, where we had Pyromancy to get us through the whole game, this game doesn't have that. However, what this game does have is items that can increase our stat attributes without the need for us to level up. But before we grab any of those items, we... Just give it a second. Head to the Forest of the Fallen Giants. Stick our dagger into the ass of every hollow we come across. Use those souls to purchase the mace, which does a decent bit of damage, but has zero range whatsoever. Make this epic jump. Speak to Kale for his house key, then commit an atrocity. <laughs> <laughs> Grab Kale's helmet, which is a special item that gives us plus two dexterity when equipped. Grab the life ring. Grab the light crossbow, which is one of the only crossbows we can use the entire game. And then run to the first boss in the game, the last giant. And every time I look at this cutscene, I think about why he has such a peculiar shape hole in his face and how I could possibly stick my dick. The last giant isn't much to talk about. He does the same attack six times in a row, and by the time you notice he's in phase two, he's dead. And we acquire the soldier's key, which we can use to fight the pursuer, who would be a lot harder if there wasn't a crossbow that did 90% of his health in the arena. Now we can get picked up by a bird and dropped into the Lost Bastille, and the only thing we need to do in the Lost Bastille for now, besides getting hit in the back by a fireball, 
is opening up McDuff's workshop, who sells us infinite cross bolts and large titanite shards, allowing us to get all our weapons to plus six. Now we can head to Hyde's Tower of Flame, kill this dragon, who has the same moveset as the glory hole face dude, Sin. and also drops the Watch Dragon Parma, a shield which increases our item discovery. Then fight the Dragon Rider, who is easy because none of his attacks can reach his back, and all we have to do is keep our face near his chromatic ass. And once that's done, we fight an average Towering Pants viewer, then go talk to Vengarl, who gives us infinite lightning pine resins, get the Chloranthi ring plus one. I'm gonna back. Please! Oh! No! No! And then go back to the cross path in Hyde's Tower of Flame, pay this lady for her services. It's not my first time doing something like this. What do you mean by that? And now we're in Huntsman's Corpse where we can fight DS2's most infamous boss, Enemy Spam. This boss isn't even that bad, especially if you have a Loring Skull to divert the attention of the skeletons and try to fight them one at a time. Now that we've made it past Huntsman's Corpse, we are the champions. We gain access to Harvest Valley, which contains a few Titanite chunks for my mace and another talking lady I will be spending lots of souls on. We also go and fight another one of DS2's infamous boss, aka Jabba the Hutt, aka the manager at Planet Fitness, aka your Tinder match, aka my Discord mods, aka the reason the dinosaurs went extinct, aka your humongous mass of a mother, and it's dead. Now we go through the wonder that is Earthern Peak. How the- how did he continue his attack in mid-air? What is wrong with you? You have no head! How do you even think about this shit? I fucking love this area. For fuck's sake, fuck you guys. How? Why do you do this? This makes no sense! But I needed to go through it to grab a special item. The work hook that gives us plus five dexterity when equipped in our offhand and combined with Kale's helmet will allow us to two-hand the rapier, which has a lot more range than the mace. No, 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 I fucked up! Help! No, I can't! I'm alive. And deletes most bosses health bars. And also to go fight Mytha, because she's uh, GG way too easy. And I have infinite life gems if she happens to do damage to me. Moving on, we go back to the Shaded Woods where we got the Chloranthi ring. Oh, no, no. And continue through it to kill Quaylag's half-sister. Oh, will you look at that, guys. She's a scorpion. Who I still believe looks way better from the waist down. From the waist down? I could get by it. But other than that, the boss fight is me running around her arena, waiting for her to do tail attacks, since that is the only chance in the fight you can do damage without getting hit right afterwards. Anyways, GG way too easy. And now that she's dead, that signifies the end of early game for DS2, which I'm gonna give a 3 out of 10. Not because of the bosses, but because of what the fuck all the enemies around them. Now starting with mid-game, we equip the Jester's Helmet, Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, and Watch Dragon Parma for extra item discovery. I killed it, yes. Then run to Brightstone Cove Tesseldora so we can farm these miners, not those miners, for their gear set, which turns our 6 adaptability to 12 adaptability. And if you don't know what adaptability is, it's a DS2 only attribute that you have to sync levels into to gain more iframes for your rolling animation. I dodged through it! I love this game! We start off with 8 iframes, and now with the peasant set, we have 9 iframes. Just to put it into perspective, 8 iframes is the same amount of iframes you get in DS1 when you fat roll. I love... Dark Souls 2. Now with our nine iframes, we can go and fight another enemy spam, which was somehow slightly harder than the last one. We then go through the rest of Tesseldora, which leads us to Duke's Dear Freya. Go, 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 go. You better not, you better not, you better not, you better not. Go! How? This game is so bad! Whose most difficult facet is being unable to kill the boss quickly because of the sheer magnitude of spiders that spawn around it. 
Yes! I did it! Bye bye, spiders! Stop trying to attack me! This is. Stop it! And that's our first great soul acquired. The next one is in the gutter, which is a lovely area to get through, where we fight the rotten. Let me through! Let me through! Which, unlike the other bosses. No! 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 I fucked up! Help! No, I can't! I'm alive. I died to him. Oh, we do a good amount of damage. Before realizing he does the same two attacks over and over again, and I should be ashamed of myself for dying in the first place. Once we acquire his great soul, we head to the next great soul, which is in the old iron keep. But in order to get there, we have to go through the arduous task of slowly crossbowing and trading hits with nearly every enemy in iron keep. And there are so many of them. But once we finally make it to a bonfire, we can fight the old Iron King, which unlike his area, is the easiest of the great soul bosses, especially with that perfect jawline. And GG way too easy. God, this game is easy. <laughs> with his great soul embraced, we go to face the last great soul boss, which means heading to No Man's Wharf, overpowering the Flexile Sentry, heading to the opposite side of the Lost Bastille, and then easily... Oh no! I said easily... I said easily getting to the Lost Sinner who would be way more difficult if we didn't have access to infinite life gems. This is my strategy. Run away, pop a life gem, hit him once or twice, run away again. Throughout the fight. Now with that finished, and GG way too easy, we've completed the mid-game portion of DS2, which I will rightfully place at 4 out of 10, because boss is easy, area's not so easy. Now going on to late game, we watch Tom Holland in the crowded room. What the hell is his back doing? Head to Drang Lake Castle, the only place that made me scream. I can't move! Go fight Dragon Rider again. This time there's an archer in the arena. And that adds a bit of challenge to it. Till I figure out that Dragon Riders are weak to blunt damage. GG's boys. After killing them, we attempt to get Goer's Ring. Fail. Oh, I didn't see you. What is wrong with you? How is such a big man so hard to spot? Then actually get Goer's Ring, which is a ring that has a man wrap his arms around your warm embrace, just like Tom Holland did in the crowd. And this prevents us from taking damage from back attacks. Unlike Tom Holland in the crew. Moving on from man-on-man -man action, we fight the Looking Glass Knight. How did that even, what even, what even is that? My personal favorite boss in this game. Oh, this is such a great game, guys. ADP is so great. The only thing that ruins it is our lack of adaptability to roll past any of his attacks and bad hitboxes. But this is DS2. I shouldn't have expected. Bro, I just wanted to hit you once! Any less. I swear to God! Now with Glassy dead. Yes! We have everybody's favorite area to go through, which actually isn't that bad with a maxed out crossbow. Just really slow and tedious. Once we finish with that, we fight the Demon of Song, known to be the most complex fight to ever exist. He definitely has more attacks than the one you are seeing. Now with him dead, we head to the undead crypt, which becomes hell. Oh my god, they're all here! All of them are here! No! If you ring one of the bells, bells, bells. There's also a boss here that I'm not gonna try to pronounce, who is only difficult if you didn't know about the bell chanting attack. All right, don't stand in front of him when he does the bell attack. And you can make it past- Great game, I, I fucking press dodge! <laughs> most of DS2's terrible hitboxes. How, what part of that hit me? Although I will say- That was the toughest one so far. Now we meet the husk that is Vendrick the King, who I hit out of pity, steal his ring, go back to the Shaded Woods for the third time, use the King Ring on the- Door.
it takes a few seconds to open. Hold up. And now we're in Aldia's Keep, which is home to... Open! Open the door! The Guardian Dragon, who has the same immersive moveset as the one from early game. After him, we get to speak to the ancient dragon who gives us the mist heart, which we have to use on this tree, and then leads us to fight the giant lord, who happens to have the same immersive moveset as the giant from early game. Except this one. No, no, they're the exact same. After reinstating my hatred for giants, we get a key that takes us to another speedy door. I won't make you sit through this one. That we have to reopen every time we die. Love this game. And takes us to the Throne Watchers, who I actually only died to once. God damn it, we even do good damage with that. That's so stupid. These guys are so dumb. This boss fight is actually pretty difficult, until you realize that every time the fast one finishes a combo, he's open to getting punished. And once he's dead, you're left with the throne defender, who's just Dragon Rider in disguise. Come on! Die! Woo! GG, way too easy! With the throne watchers dead, we face the final boss of this game, Elizabeth II who actually poses quite a difficult challenge for our level 1 character. Mostly because she is the only boss so far that can one-shot us. Aw, oh, come, why do you one-shot me? And the orb she summons drains us of our health throughout the fight. She keeps cursing me! Stop cursing me! I have no health left! However, like every boss in DS2, we can force her to do one attack over and over again until she inevitably- Ooh, I almost killed me. Come on. What? Die! How did you not get hit? Dies of old age. Goodbye, Nashandra. GG, Dark Souls 2, Soul Level 1. Fuck all the walking I had to do. And with that said, we have finished late game and DS2. We finished both, which I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. I would have made it a 6 out of 10 if we didn't have a crossbow and goer's ring to get us through all the tedious areas. Now adding up the ratings for DS2, we get an average difficulty of 4 out of 10 for DS2's Soul Level 1 run, putting it just one point higher than Dark Souls 1. Now on to Dark Souls 3, to reset my character to level 1 again, and avoid the temptation- No, not the back slap! That is, WHAT THE FUCK HIT ME?! Leveling up. Are you joking me? And also to figure out if DS3's Soul Level 1 run- No! Stop! Why do you keep doing this?! Will be any more difficult than the others. First off, DS3 is unique from both DS1 and DS2. It doesn't have overpowered pyromancies like in DS1, nor does it have any items we can equip in our offhand to allow us to increase our stats like in DS2. What it does have, however, is four rings that can each increase our strength, dexterity, faith, and intelligence by five stat points. With two of those rings, we can eventually equip the Dragon Slayer Axe, which is the most overpowered weapon in a Soul Level 1 run. But in order to obtain any of that, we need to progress through the game first. So we start off naming our character Goofball, because he looks like a goofball. But I could have named him after anybody watching this video right now and pausing and deciding to click in the link in the description to my Discord. Do it! Goofball starts off as the Deprived class with all level 10 stats, way better than DS2. We wake up in a graveyard, kill a crystal lizard, and then make it to the first boss in the game, which if you've ever played this game, isn't all that bad. And GG way too easy! Woo! We make it to Firelink, open this door. I'm gonna stop making you guys sit through this. Grab the broadsword, which is going to be the weapon we use for the majority of the run. Equip pants. We now have pants. Towering pants. Face the worst enemies in this game. And then go up against Vort of the Boreal Valley, which if you've ever played this game, isn't all that bad. We did it, chat! The boss is so big that if you hide inside him, he can't hit you. 
and the only attack we need to be wary of is this charge attack he does once he enters second phase. Once he's dead, we watch Emma die of a heart attack. Seems you died. Must have been a heart attack. Hold up a banner. Make our way through the undead settlement. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Ah! Ah! That felt so good, chat. Face the worst enemies in this game. No! Again. Progress Siegward's questline. We have one chance, one opportunity. This is our moment, chat. My palms are sweaty. My knees are weak, my arms are sweaty. There's vomit on my sweater already. Grab the Grass Crest Shield, and after a lot of running, dying. No! Running, dying, oh. running, dying. Can we not do this? We eventually face our first Cinder, who for the first time in this video is an actual boss with difficulty. Unlike DS1 and DS2, where most of the boss's attacks are telegraphed, DS3 bosses are both quick and very deadly. Not to say some of the bosses in the other games weren't difficult, but a lot of the bosses in DS3 require you to remember their moveset and punish you for playing too defensively. Leading back to the Abyss Watchers- ah! I'm alive! What is this health bar? We can clearly see the polish DS3 has over the other games. As a Soul Level 1 build, we're able to do a fair amount of damage, but aren't able to survive his combo attacks. Are you fucking kidding me?! So we spend most of the first phase running from the fight trying to get backstabs, and then once second phase commences, the difficulty spikes, obviously, and we have to become wary of certain attacks that can clip us for playing too defensively. And besides all the fucking Christ, Red One, you are not supposed to attack me! Screaming. And I hate this game. I enjoyed learning this boss fight again and coming out victorious. Yes! GG's! Next boss up is Dancer of the Boreal Valley. And yes, I'm fighting this one early. Why, you might ask? Well, after killing the Watcher, we gathered a ton of Titanite chunks and our weapon is as upgraded as it can be at this point in the game, without going to Lothric Castle. And Lothric Castle happens to be guarded by the Dancer. And that's how I got myself. I couldn't fucking see. Why did it not lock on? What is the point of this game? In this situation. And this situation. I fucking dodged, man. I pressed the fucking circle button. Can you just? In this situation. I couldn't even see you. This camera is so shit! And this situation. I fucking got me! Oh my god! I died oh, not the so many times. Dancer, how did that hit me? Is hard as shit. No, no, why would I do that? At soul level one. Oh, how did that hit me? No matter what we do, 90% of her attacks one shot us. The combo. Oh! Oh! And the dancer is both extremely slow and extremely fast. I, I hate, I hate that attack. It, it's so fast. It's hard to describe, but her temperamental moveset is very hard for my brain uh, to keep up with. How, what, what part? Bro, is it, is it like her elbow? And the fact our damage output isn't all that good doesn't help. How I ended up killing this boss was both a bit of luck and hours of ingraining her moveset into my thick skull. Yes! 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 Woo! We did it! It was easy, guys. All you had to do was kill the boss. With that said, that's the end of early game for Dark Souls 3, which I will easily place at a 7 out of 10. I have faced far harder bosses before with even less odds than the ones in early game, but our lack of health as a Soul Level 1 character facing the Dancer made me scream, yeah, I get one shot, it doesn't fucking matter, quite a lot. So 7 out of 10 it is. Now moving on to mid game, we make it to Lothra Castle, gather the Titanite chunks we need, and then go to clear all the easy bosses, that being Crystal Sage, Deacons, and Wolnir. Crystal Sage can be made easier with throwing knives. Throwing knife tactic is too easy. Deacons can be made easier with alluring skulls. And Wolnir is Wolnir. 
After killing them, we gain access to the profane capital. Buy one of the most important rings for our Soul Level 1 character, since it prevents us from getting one shot, complete Siegward's questline, giving us a tight knight's lab, and then murder him mercilessly because we don't want him to spawn in the boss The onion guy just has to die, guys. He just had to die. <laughs> you know what? No, I, I killed him because I wanted to. And then go to face Yorm the Giant, who if you don't know is a gimmick fight if you equip the Storm Ruler. After him, we get the Dragon Slayer Axe. No! Not me! Well, I got the axe. <laughs> and go to fight Pontiff Sullivan, who as long as you know how to parry... How did I miss? Who as long as you know how to parry... Come on! How did I miss? Who as long as you know how to parry... How? Yes, I'm going to keep doing this. Who as long as you know how to parry and have a plus eight weapon, you can get through his first and second phase. Come on! He's dead! Come on! Please give me it! Give me it! Give me the boss, please! Quite easily. I would imagine that if you did this fight without parrying, this fight would be a contender with the dancer from early game. But luckily for us, that's not the case. Now done with mid game, I'm gonna give it a solid 3 out of 10 for difficulty, since Pontiff is the only one who gave me any sort of trouble. Moving on to late game, we fight the hardest bosses DS3 has to offer. First off is Aldrich, the Devourer of Gods. Boss-wise, this boss isn't the most difficult. No, are you joking me? A little less difficult than the Abyss Watchers if I had to put it on a scale. We attack his tail through the entire fight until he reaches second phase. And then we attack his tail some more. The only thing we really need to look out for is all the one-shot attacks and the Rain of Arrows attack that he summons. But other than that, the fight wasn't all that bad. And GG, too easy. Aldrich is mine. I'm the one who beat him off. Hell freaking yeah. After Aldrich, we go and face another Orenstein-like boss. This one is the most difficult of them all. What the fuck hit me? Since no, all of his attacks are a one shot. Besides this shield attack, which just barely doesn't qualify since it one shots you in second phase. He is relentless with his attacks. Oh, I'm dead. God damn it. God damn it. And just like the dancer, he has both no, no, fast. I couldn't, I couldn't even see, bro. There's a fountain blocking us. And slow actions that confuse the fuck out of me. Some of his attacks, why does he hold it for so long? Even have different variations to them. How did he hold it for long? Even though they're the same attack, which makes dodging them. Oh my God, he holds it for longer. Why? Even harder to do. And to add on top of that, we have to avoid the meatballs in the background that shoot us throughout the fight. So as you can imagine, after an innumerable amount of attempts, I stopped having the skill issue and killed the boss. Yes! 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 DS Day is down! Woo! I did it! After that, arduous task, we pick up the strength ring and dexterity ring, which gives us just enough stats to two-hand the dragon slayer axe. And just to show you how good this weapon is, we fight the twin princes, which is known as a difficult fight. And within a few tries, our overwhelming damage shows, and we quite easily manage to deal with this boss through sheer blunt force. GG's boys! The last Soul of Cinder, defeated. Sadly, however, that will not be the case for the last boss in the game. Yes, we do good amount of damage, but damn is he difficult. You start off facing his standard sword form, which took practice to get down, yes, but easily became my best performing phase. If he switched to the sorcery form, we simply had to get close to him and evade whenever necessary. Although sometimes it didn't really work. If he switched to the scimitar form, no, I do not like this face. This is pyromancy face. No, no, I ran for dear life. And if he switched to his spear form, I would play defensively. 
but would stay close enough to where he doesn't do this attack on me. And once all of that is down, you can get past his first phase pretty easily, and he enters his pling, pling, plong. And honestly, this phase was the easiest, since I would run like a coward around the arena, wait for him to do a jump attack, capitalize, and then rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Yes! DS3, Soul Level 1, done! That's the end of late game, which easily was harder than early game and mid game. So I'm gonna give it a solid eight out of 10. And with that said, the ratings have been complete for Dark Souls 3 Soul Level 1 run, which if we add up, gives us an average of six out of 10, putting DS3 two points higher than DS2 in terms of difficulty. And now on to the final game in this video. Elden Ring. No! Why? Like, that's so stupid! That's so stupid! Now, in terms of stat distribution, this game is the easiest. Even though we start off with all level 10 stats, there are numerous ways to increase that within the run. We can use talismans like the rings in DS3, our wondrous physic, certain ashes of war, and special equipment like in DS2. And with the ability to increase our character stats so high, we can mix and match different builds to whatever we see fit, making the bosses easier or harder depending on your skill level. I what? And the weapon you decide to use. Yes, that's an okay attack as well. See, not that's not an okay attack. We don't attack during that attack. The only definitive in this run is the fact that nearly every boss will. Dodge! I the fuck! I didn't run out of stamina! Ah! Or can. No! Oh my god! How did I die from that? One shot you. Oh my god! Luckily for me. No! How did you. What? what, what? Ah! I know this game quite well. We start off naming our character Kevin, get touched by the grafted scion, make it to Limgrave, grab our horse while I spin the camera like a maniac. Grab Golden Seeds and Sacred Tears. Grab the Strength Crystal Tear for plus 10 strength. Grab Golden Vow. Fight Nurius. Obtain Rejuvia. No, you ass, he turned. Obtain Rejuvia. No, you asshole. No, just kill him, Yura. Just kill him. Obtain, obtain Rejuvia. Yes, Yura. You finally did your job. Grab the Dectus Pieces. Grab Radagon Sword Seal for plus five to our dex and strength. Kill Mommy Grail. Cheese Commander O'Neill. Give the needle to Millicent. Obtain the Prothesis Wearer Heirloom for plus five dex. Grab Rotten Breath and Dragon Ice. Grab the Star Scounge Heirloom for plus five strength. Grab Flame Grant Me Strength. Grab the Two Finger Heirloom for plus five faith. Grab the Dexterity Crystal Tear for plus 10 Dexterity. Grab the Jellyfish Shield. Grab the Intelligence Crystal Tear for plus 10 Intelligence. Cheese Loretta. Start Ronnie's quest line. Use the Dectus Medallion. Grab the Ruler's Mask for plus 1 Faith. Enter Volcano Manor. Grab the Funny Mask for 4 Arcane, allowing us to wield the Rejuvia and fight the Godskin Noble. Now this fight is significantly easier than the Godskin Duo. However, with our current build, it's still quite a challenge. We can use our Rejuvia to keep a distance away from the Godskin Noble throughout the fight, but the second he reaches second phase and starts doing the roly-poly, he becomes completely unpredictable. No, 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 why? Why would you do that? Why? Why would you do the worst possible combination? Uh, and the only thing we can do is pray that we get lucky enough for him not to do this <laughs> or any of this. What? How did he go into? What did he just? How? What? What? GG, nerd. Yes. Look at me. After him, we can grab the last somber stone we need, 
and the weapon we will be using for the entire game. Upgrade it, and then finally head to Margit, who at this point, everybody should know how to kill without too much trouble. Yeah! Yes! Margit is dead! First try! With the talisman pouch he drops, we can equip another one of the talismans we grabbed and then make our way to Godric, who with a maxed out Serpent Hunter and all the buffs we've been gathering... <laughs> GG! <laughs> wow, bro. Simple. ...is the easiest fight in this game. With that great rune acquired, we need one more to progress the game, which we will be getting from Radon. Dodge! No! What? And you might think I would have a lot of trouble with Radon. How oh, did that hit me? What? And you wouldn't necessarily be wrong, but I had more trouble trying to activate my buffs during the boss fight and get as much damage off as possible. That was a beautiful amount of damage. I don't even care that I died. Then facing the boss itself. And goodbye, Radon. Now with him dead, that's the end of early game which I will give a 4 out of 10, because Godskin Noble. Ah! After Radon, we can grab another Talisman Pouch, head to Nokron, fight the Mimic Tier, obtain the Silver Tier Mask for plus 8 Arcane, grab the Finger Slayer Blade, grab the Carrion Inverted Statue, use it to grab the Stargazer Heirloom for plus 5 Intelligence, grab the Ritual Sword Talisman, that'll increase our damage when we're at full HP, and then grab Marika's Scar Seal for plus 3 on our Arcane, Faith, and Intelligence. With this, this also marks the end of me grabbing items. Thank God. Now we can run to the Draconic Tree Sentinel and do this to him. And boom. 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 Yes! <laughs> we did it! We killed him in the most perfect way possible. What can I say? This game is too easy. Now we can head through the capital and fight Godfrey Shadow Boxer. And this fight's like Margit, where I've beaten him enough times where it's not even that much of a challenge. And GG. Definitely my first try. Next boss is Morgoth, and I learned how to fight this guy in my last video, where we stand around waiting for him to do this spear attack or this jump attack, capitalize, and then wait around some more. Overall, not that difficult of a fight. Take this! Yes! Morgoth is down! Now with him dead, we go to the mountaintops of giants and fight one of the most- Run away, run away, run away. No! Difficult bosses. I couldn't do anything because of fucking torrent. I hate torrent in any challenge run. Why did the horse go into him? What is wrong with you? Torrent. Yes, I'm talking about. Oh, bro, bro lifted his foot an inch off the ground. The fire. No, I fu fucking. No, how it. Giant. Oh my god! If you can't tell. No! How it. I hate this guy. No! Why? Like, that's so stupid! That's so stupid! He is the reason I hate the giants. There's one thing you guys know I hate it's Fire Giant so goddamn much. And balls, goddammit! Why does he always shoot balls at me? His health bar is giant, and his balls are giant too. Nothing about this fight is likable. While he is a walking hitbox of a boss, this hitbox knows how to fight back, making it incredibly tedious to do any amount of damage to him. And phase two isn't any better. How I beat this boss was a lot of luck and multiple attempts of doing the exact same thing until eventually it just worked out. Yes! Oh, 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 yes! Oh my god! That took so long for no reason! Oh, I thought I was good at Fire Giant. Fuck that guy. Luckily, with him dead, that's the end of mid game, which, without Fire Giant, would have probably been a 4 out of 10. But with the living piece of shit that is the Fire Giant, 
I'm ranking this at a 7 out of 10, and that's being generous. Moving on to late game, we can make it to Ferrum Azula and fight another shitty boss. Compatible- No, 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 I, well, I didn't think it would just spawn in and just do a black flame. What are you- what, what crack are you on? You just got born! With the fire giant. And he just goes over! What is wrong with this game? I tried this boss for a very long time. What part of that hit me? Trying to do it the legit way. But these two assholes weren't allowing it whatsoever. So I had to whip out the sleep arrow tactic. We all know and love. And after some close calls... No, 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 why would you do that? I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And a lot of running away, I got lucky enough and did it. Yes! Yes! Sleeping arrows for the win! Now it's time for the Malakusi. Oh, come on! His fucking face blocked it, you piece of shit! Which, unbeknownst to me... What? How did that hit me? Wasn't that difficult of a fight. Yes! Quite easy! I killed the furry! Since we can spam Scarlet Rot during his first phase, it doesn't really become that much of a problem. And then for second phase, we can spam Bleed Procs, making this fight a lot easier. Once he's dead, we wake up in the ash of all the people we incinerated and fight Gideon the All-Knowing, which in a challenge run like this one, is one of the most difficult bosses by far. The reason this is, is because this fight relies purely on luck. How does that hit me? This is because all of his attacks are one shot, and he has this ring attack. On a normal run, you can just tank the damage. But on a soul level 1, not only is the ring attack nearly impossible for us to dodge, but he spams it multiple times in a row, killing us instantly whether we dodged it correctly or not. Looking back, I remember not enjoying this fight whatsoever. I would rather fight the fire giant again. And we all know how that went. Oh my god! But after testing my luck over and over and over and over again, praying he doesn't spam me with ring attacks. Why do you have to spam the attack, man? I killed Gideon. Yes! Yes! I just barely clipped his foot. Yes! Luckily, after Gideon, we fight a more fair boss, being Horaloo. God damn it, that didn't even hit me. What part of that hit me? And I've fought this guy plenty of times before. Godfrey, I know you inside and out, both literally and physically. And even without any cheesy methods, he isn't the worst boss in this game when it comes to difficulty. Yes! Woo! That was basically first try, come on. Finally, we made it to the last boss in this game. Radagon and Elden Beast. And I'm gonna be honest, this boss is difficult, but he's not that difficult. Radagon can feel random sometimes. Yes, but does he repeat the same attacks over and over again? Yes, even though being one shot kind of sucks. Yes, and we don't do a lot of damage to the boss. Yes. Learning his moveset isn't very hard if you've ever played a shitty melee build. Yes. So although this fight is difficult, yes, it's not that difficult. Suck on my nuts, bitch. And once we move on to Elden Beast, the fight only gets easier. Oh my god! Since Elden Beast spams the same moves a hundred times in a row, and none of them are very hard to dodge, just hard to time which makes the boss seem difficult, but in reality, he isn't all that bad. First ever, Elden Beast, no Elden Stars. Holy shit! What? That was insane! He didn't even do Elden Stars. Anyways, R01, done. Room level one. We did it, woo! Now with that complete, we have finished late game, which I'm gonna give eight out of 10, because all of these late game bosses make a difficult end game challenge for our pitifully weak character. 
Adding up the score for Elden Ring's Soul Level 1 run, we get an average score of 6.3 out of 10, making Elden Ring the most difficult game to Soul Level 1, following Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 2, and then Dark Souls 1. I didn't even intend for them to be in order. It just happened to be that way. Anyways, bye-bye.